Hey buddies, Sunnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you all about farming for battle burritos. Battle burritos are the strongest food in the game. It gives you, I believe, five different buffs, high leveled buffs as well. It's great for defense, it's great for attack. It's great for healing. It's just an all round absolutely OP item. And uh, in this video, we're going to show you how you can farm all the different types of animals required uh, in terms of the meat that you need to make the battle burrito. So you can have essentially an infinite supply of these battle burritos for yourself. Alrighty, so what we're going to be doing is looking at the farming of the five different animals. We have Aspid, Arasaur, Bobico, Maka, and Pinky or Kathoga. And uh, a couple of these are very easy to do in terms of uh, traveling, uh, bringing them over and feeding them. Some of them are a little bit more difficult. So in terms of these three, the Babiko, the Maka and the Arasaur, they can be bred with any vegetable as far as I'm aware. Pretty much any vegetable should work. And the Aspid requires mushrooms. So you can see I'm holding mushrooms that are already quite attracted. To the mushrooms, potatoes for these guys will get them going crazy, and I think any vegetable should work. And you breed these just the same way you would breed any other animal. You just go up to them and right-click them, they eat. I don't know if the timer is reset, and Arasaur is quite big, so you don't always see the particles. Okay, it doesn't look like the breeding timer is reset for these guys. Oh, it has for these guys, lovely. So just as normal, maybe I didn't get close enough. I'm always not sure. The Aras Okay, there you go, I didn't, don't think I got close enough. So you, got, you really got to right click on the body because our stores are so big. You really got to get in there and right click on the body. Maka, same way. Easy peasy. Waka waka. And then the mushrooms for the aspid. There we go. Lovely. Now traveling with these some of these guys is quite easy. The easiest way to do it is with a rock. So assuming you've got your rock, you can use the rock's ability to pick up these mobs. It's easiest to go in third person. And there you go. So you can pick up a Maka. You can pick up a Bobico. You, you cannot, however, pick up Arasaur. Now, Arasaur are very plentiful in sort of early game, comfortable biomes like planes and whatnot. So luring an Arasaur to your base, which is probably in one of these biomes, won't be too hard. Grab yourselves a vegetable and bring them with you. They'll follow you quite easily. Now the Aspid, you can do the same with mushrooms, you can drag them over, but they spawn in swamps and you may not have them quite close to your base depending on where you've built that. You can do them with rocks as well, however, they do leave a poison gas behind them wherever they walk or wherever they've been, um, and that can make it a slightly more difficult. So if you get close with your rock, you can pick it up. You don't need to be too close to pick them up. I dropped, picked up the baby there by accident. You don't need to be too close to pick them up, kind of like magnets in. However, what you want to be aware of is once you start moving, the aspid will leave these poison clouds behind. So you don't want to backtrack on anywhere that you've previously walked. So as you see, it pops poison clouds behind as I go. If I now go backwards onto one of those poison things, it's going to cause my rock to get poisoned. It's going to, and me, if I was not in creative, it's going to do tick damage. The tick damage yeets my rock backwards or in a random direction. And it seems like once you've once you've been poisoned, it keeps yeeting you back into the poison and you can't then get out of it. So if I go into the poison here, it's going to keep pushing my rock back. And I don't before when I was testing it, I wasn't able if I go this way, the way that it's pushing me. But I essentially wasn't able to stop the poison ticks and it just it kept going. I had to drop the aspid. Otherwise, my rock would have died um, and I had to restart again. So that can be quite annoying as long as you don't move. Uh, and as long as you don't backtrack into the poison cloud, you should be fine there. So Aspid's a little bit more difficult, Arasaur a little bit more difficult. Now the hardest side of things is with the pinkies. I tried a few different methods with pinkies. Firstly, you can breed tamed and soulbound pets. So I tamed a couple of pinkies, I had them in here, and I bred the two tamed pinkies, but it results in a... Uh, a tamed pinky that you can't kill. You, know, you can't kill this for its meat. Uh, and there might be some ways to force it to die, maybe with like fire or cramming or so there's there's probably some methods to force it to die and therefore get its meat, but obviously you can't do that with looting and whatnot, so it doesn't seem like a very effective method. Yo, these guys are actually getting hearts already. Um, <laughs> 
Okay, well, that kind of a little, little bit of a spoiler. First, let's look at how we can get some pinkies trapped and, ta uh, and uh, you know, corralled, essentially. Because they're quite difficult. They're quite difficult indeed. This one's actually going to make things easy for us, or would do if I was trying to do this at the moment. But essentially, um, what I ended up doing is I trapped a couple of pinkies in a spot like this. Right, so I, I got a couple of pinkies in here. Now, you can either do that just by, you know, having them chase you and then locking them in and, you know, double jumping or high jumping over, whatever the case may be. Obviously, if you've got lots of armor, that's pretty easy to do. Now, you can also pick these guys up with a rock. I'm not going to show you because it's on cooldown. And, but basically, if you pick these guys up with a rock, they will be attacking your rock very quickly. So you can't hold them for very long before they kill your rock. Um, if you have a variant rock, which has double HP and diamond armor, you can hold it for an okay amount of time and maybe get it into your, uh, into your nether portal or popped into a, a little corral near another portal like this. Um, the exit portal needs to be bigger because I, I believe if they travel through this portal and arrive at a portal the same size, they will take tick damage and su basically suffocate because they're not quite big enough to sit in there or they're too big to sit in there is what I mean. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so once you, once you've got them corralled like this, you can either fly them straight in with a rock, um, or you can, uh, corral them like this. So once you've got them corralled in like this, we can pop into survival. I think I only have one heart on my head. Yeah, so I don't want to get hit here. Um, and there you go. See, they both teleported through, and then I'm going to follow them. And we should have them now on the other side. I can break this and let them into the pen properly. Now, these do not require a food or a direct food to be to be t uh, to be bred. In fact, I'd probably want to close this pen back up so they don't go back through there. Be careful. You probably want to break this when you're done because other large things come. I had one of those big flying things. There's like a big flying mouth and brain and some tentacles that shoots green orbs. I had one of those come through and start shooting stuff. So that was no bueno. Um, but in terms of breeding these guys, they need large live animals. So if you have like a little cow pen next to it, you can breed the cows up as a food source for them. You can pick them up with the carry on mod and just drop them in there. Oh, they don't seem to want to go for them. They have eyes only for those ones. Hey guys, there's one in there. Okay, there we go. It took a, it took a moment, but they decided to kill the cow. And hopefully they'll be breeding now. Maybe they're distracted by the mobs. If we put all the, put all the cows in there. Oh, we do have a baby. Okay, cool. So we did get a baby. Oh, now the baby's murdering the cow. Okay. Um, long story short, pinkies can be a little bit difficult. A little bit difficult. Maybe you might want to have your... Uh, cow farm uh, or your little cow pen here just a little bit further away so they're not distracted by it and then you just drop a number of cows in the babies do kill the cows um, as well instead of breeding so uh, either you're going to want to separate the babies some way or you're going to want to uh, just throw a bunch of cows in there a bunch of a bunch of food for them to kill and they'll they'll definitely breed I'm just going to see if we can remove this baby without removing the others real quick. Bear with me two seconds. All right, we just did a little bit of testing, um, and it looks like something like this will be quite good. If you want to separate the babies, uh, I don't think they'll breed again right now because they've just bred to produce these little guys. But if you were to drop cows, a couple of cows in here, um, and then once they breed, uh, they'll create little babies. And if you have a little, a little uh, setup like this, the babies can go through under the one block. And they'll be attracted to the cows. So once the babies are created, they will be attracted to the cows at some point. They'll lose interest and walk back a little bit, but they will go for the cows at some point. And depending on how much you care, you can close up the door or not. And you can keep like a few pinkies for breeding and then a few and then, you know, bring the babies over here and uh, and eliminate these guys for the meats or whatever the case may be. If you really wanted to go a step further, I'm sure you could create a little uh, a little redstone contraption to open or close a door here um, that would allow the babies to go through, but not the adults. Uh, maybe a, I don't know, maybe a trap door or something or other. I'm sure you redstone people could do it if you wanted. Just flick a switch here. It opens. The babies run through to these cows, and then you flick it, and it closes again. And then you got the babies here and the adults there. 
something along those lines. But essentially, guys, that is how you uh, corral and breed all of the meats, all of the, all of the meats. That's how you that's how you corral all the meat required. Um, you're not even animals. You're just you're just meat at this point, guys. Um, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day, except Monday and Friday. I usually take for editing. Uh, I also run an RLCraft 2.9 SMP server. You guys would be welcome to join. That is run from the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash some nuts guy. If you guys want to join the SMP server, all you got to do is jump on the Twitch channel, earn 3000 channel points and redeem the whitelist channel point redemption and you'll be good to go. Alrighty guys. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.